Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. Today's video is a planting video and this is something that I really enjoy doing and I think that you will enjoy it as well because as a gardener when it comes to planting this is when the real joy of gardening actually starts and begins because you get to make the garden your own. Almost like an artist you paint a picture using the flowers in all different colors, shapes, textures and you could just like create your own little haven. Today is a beautiful day for planting. It's a little overcast, but we're in our low 20s, so I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's really pleasant out here. Uh, mosquitoes, we still have mosquitoes, but it's still all right. I think I, I can manage it. <laughs> um, you can see next to me what I'm going to plant today in my wheelbarrow already. I will be planting autumn anemones. So this is a variety which is called anemone you Fihansis, something like that. I'm going to write the name down into the description just so you could do research on it again. When it comes down to autumn anemones, I never planted them really before or I never grew them before. My parents never grew them, my grandparents never grew them and even growing up I can't remember ever seeing them. I just think they just weren't a thing really back then or maybe because I grew up so much on a rural countryside you just didn't have access to get like special flowers like these. Um, I tried and grow them in pots before though, but I was never really successful with that. I think the reason for it is that maybe, maybe the winter is too harsh here, maybe it's too cold, maybe it's too damp, I don't know. So from my own experience, they just don't really thrive well in pots. So this is why today I will try it again, but um, in ground. I have a perfect location for it, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but first I wanna tell you a little bit about these beauties here. So as you can tell, um, the growing habit, you have this kind of like dome shape of leaves at the bottom. They almost remind me a little bit of like a, I don't know, like Euchara or Tiarella or something like that when it comes down to the leaves. And then you have the flowers that are on these very long and elegant stems, topped by these beautiful flowers, really looking like anemones, like spring anemones. Uh, they come in all different kind of pink tones, so they start in a really light pale blush and then they go down to deep pinks like the one that I'm having here. So this is really like one of the more rich and intense colors. And they also come in white, which is really beautiful. In terms of um, growing conditions, they like to have a really rich soil and they like to have good moisture. So they don't really like to dry out completely. So make sure you combine them with the right plant neighbors. They will thrive best in a semi-shade condition, which I'm having here. They can grow in a sunny condition as well. I've seen them growing in sunny conditions, but then they really need to have a good, good watering going on. So make sure you always combine them with the right plants, never like with lavender, for example. So they don't, they're not happy with any kind of Mediterranean plants. Look guys, the sun came out. How beautiful is that? So as I said, I just want to show you a little bit on where we are in the garden. I'm standing in the midsection of the garden. To my right, there is the island bed with our two big walnut trees and we're looking all the way to the back of the garden with a brand new perennial border that you saw in our full garden tour video and to my left this is where I'll be planting the autumn anemone so now with the sun out you can really see the light conditions here um, this side of the garden is actually the south border but you can tell there are a lot of shrubs and trees in here we've got an elderberry an apple tree, got a lilac, and the neighbors also got like some, I think, hazels and some overgrown plum trees in there. So it is a semi-shade area of the garden. So just wanna show you a little bit of the planting that is going on in here. At the front, I've got some geraniums. They are very early flowering white geraniums, very pretty and delicate, especially when they are um, in bloom, like mid-May to mid-June, I would say, together with the tulips, very pretty, but after they spend flowering, I cut them all back and they shoot back with some fresh growth, but they're just never really doing as great in the second half of the year. So I'm a little like so-so mm, with the geraniums here. The second layer, I'm very happy with what's going on here. These are hydrangeas, paniculatas, the only uh, type of hydrangea that I grow in the garden because I'm really successful with those. This is, I think, a variety called Bobo, so it doesn't grow that tall. This is its final growing height, about one meter. And you can tell that the colors are changing and already going into the autumn stage. So in summer, they are pure white flowers and they change into this green, like a chartreuse color. And now moving into autumn, they are changing the color again into this like reddish tone, kind of like 
going a little brown already. So they've got this like really beautiful papery texture already. So they're perfect for flower arrangement or even for decorating. Moving forward, you can see two clumps of aster. So this is an Asian aster called Asran. And I really love it. It's um, very easy and carefree. It has very pale purple flowers. They start flowering like two weeks ago. So like mid and August and they'll continue for at least another six to eight weeks. So it's one of the asters that flowers for definitely more than two months. Absolutely pretty and just great for the border of a planting, I think. Then when we move forward, you'll also get to see a little gardener's mistake here. So I put some sedums in here, definitely not right plant in the right place, uh, but they are doing their job. They're not growing all the way up to the full height that they could, but I like them here. And as long as they are performing, I just let them in here and see. But then the next plant definitely, oh look, there's Alfie. This is not a plant. Alfie's inspecting everything right now, what I'm doing in the garden. There she goes. So going back to the last plant of this border, this is called Turtle's Head. This plant originates in Canada and North America. Uh, I never grew it before, so it was kind of like just ordering it because I thought, okay, this is a plant that likes um, rich soil, semi-shady condition, it flowers late. I was really intrigued by the foliage and the flower heads, and I'm not disappointed in the slightest. Um, they come in white or in pink tones. This is one that starts off with really dark foliage, and as the year progresses, the foliage gets more like a dark green. And you can tell by the flower hats, I think, why it's called turtle's hat. Anyways, when you look at all the colors that are going on in this flower bed, I think you can understand why I chose pink autumn anemones. I think that they'll be just glorious in here. All right, you guys, I think you got a pretty good impression of what the flower bed is looking like. And you might even know where I want to put the autumn anemones. The asters are thriving really well. The turtle hat is looking really nice in here. Even the sedums are quite happy. So the only area where I was like, mm, not so confident with is the front of the border here where the geraniums are. So my idea is that the geraniums will look really good for the first half of the year because they come with a fresh growth early in spring, they'll flower May up or into June. And then when I cut them back, this is the time when the uh, Ottoman enemies will kick in with a beautiful growth and they will flower later this year. So also in terms of color, I think that they are just a perfect addition here because I've got the pink from the turtle head. I got the light pink from the sedum. I got this really beautiful pale, purple kind of like a lilac violet tone from the asters and then even the um, hydrangeas change the color now into this red tone so i think it's kind of like red pinkish quality of the hydrangeas together with the autumn anemones will be really beautiful together so it's time to take them and just find the right positioning for them you guys what do you think i still need to plant them but i think already now seeing them like this it looks two billion times better than it did before like the repetition of the pink flowers from the turtle head with the autumn anemone i think it's really pretty but it it's just nice that it has this different growing habit like the turtle head is very compact and almost like dome shaped while the anemones have this really airy beautiful element that I was missing in the border a little bit and I think once they are in ground the dark nice green foliage will also look a lot better here and when you look at it closer you can tell that the amount of flowers that have opened are just 
tiny compared to all the buds that are still on these plants. I'm really expecting a firework of color yet to come. And as I said before, I really like the combination of these pink flowers together with the hydrangeas that are starting their autumn color. So they have this red pinkish quality as well. And then with the asters in the back here, I think it's gonna be so brilliant. I hope you agree with me and you like it as well. So let's get cracking and let's put them into the ground now. All right, you guys, before I start planting, there are two things that I want to talk about with you. Number one is little cutie dog here. Actually, this is not number one, but hello, Alfie, what are you doing? Are you trying to get some love from me? Where is your stick? Come on, come on, come on. Hopefully that works for a second now. So the two things I want to talk about with you, number one is the soil. So the soil here is already prepared. Like I think two years ago, I put some fresh compost under, just dug it under, I mulched it. So the soil is still lofty, has a really good texture. So I don't really need to do anything here. Number two is how do I fertilize? I always use when I'm growing um, perennials, any kind of perennials, I use organic bone chips. And you can also use bone flour, by the way, it's the same thing. So it comes from, um, the meat industry, it is what it is. So the bones as a leftover, they'll be shredded and dried and you could use them as a perfect um, organic fertilizer for your plants. So what happens is that it's going to decompose in the soil and creates nitrogen. And this is feeding your plants. So for any kind of perennial, bone chips or bone flour is always a very good and effective way of fertilizing your plant. Number two of what I'm doing is I'm always checking my perennials before I'm buying them. So when you go to the garden center and you see plants like these, of course, I also look at like all the top growth and how beautiful it's looking. I see like really good, like strong looking leaves. I see the flowers and I'm like, oh, this is going to be perfect. But don't underestimate, like this is not an annual perennials they grow on their roots. So it's really important for them that they have a really strong root system because when the winter comes, all the top growth dies back. In spring, you cut everything down to the bare bones of the ground and then they will reshoot from the root system in spring. So when I'm in the garden center, what I do is I'm checking the root system as well. So what I do, I just tip it over and just look at how the roots are looking. And what you can see on this plant already is a lot of fresh white shoots. So this is where more leaves are coming actually. What you can see as well is that this plant is uh, pot bound. And that means that all the roots are kind of like going around. It's almost like a little mash of roots, which is not a bad thing per se. So what you should do is just like go in with your fingers and just gently tease them apart a little bit. So that moving forward, there goes the pot. <laughs> Alfie found a new toy, but all right. Let her have fun with that. Um, so you want to tease the roots apart so that they're not pop bound, because if you leave it as it is, what happens, the plant will sit in the soil and the roots will continue growing all the way around how they're growing now. They won't spread out. And what you want is that the roots are spreading out everywhere. And what I want is that the roots are also going deep into the soil. So don't just tease them apart on the side. Also look underneath that and especially make sure that you kind of gently tease apart what's going on here. And this looks really good. So now it's ready to put it into the soil and let's start planting.
guys, that was it for today's planting video. You can see the anemones here in my back. And I think that they look really, really pretty in there. I can't wait for them to really burst into flower. I'm going to keep you updated and post some of the anemone photos in my Insta stories to come. Um, especially now during this time of the year, we're in mid-September. The sun in Gdansk is so, so special, especially in the back garden. And my back there is west, so we have the full evening sun flooding the garden. And that creates really magical moments here in the garden. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd really love to welcome you in the garden very soon again. Till there, take care. Bye.